Judy ask you to take that? <laughs> Hello, everyone. Oh, this is great. Nice, calm. So, I'm here to welcome all of you to this very special session, a conversation with Common, Career Pathways, Permission to Dream. My name is Jean Eddy, President and CEO of American Student Assistance. For those of you who don't know us, although you've probably seen a bit of us over the last couple of days, we're a national nonprofit that's changing the way kids learn about careers and prepare for their future. This is especially important for opportunity youth, kids who are neither working nor in school, which represents 5.5 million young people in the United States. It's a pretty staggering number. This also includes over 700,000 youth who are involved in the justice system. These numbers are simply staggering. So many of these kids, even with bright minds and limitless potential, feel they don't even have permission to dream a bright future for themselves. It is our collective responsibility to affirm to these young minds that they don't have to live in the shadows, that they are free to dream. That's why ASA is so proud to partner with the I Am Free to Dream campaign to magnify the pivotal role of dreams in shaping the futures of our youth. We strive to show them the multitude of options that exist, empowering them to achieve their dreams irrespective of circumstance. Every dream is valid and achievable. We must illuminate pathways to prosperity for kids who have been made to feel they cannot or they should not aspire to greatness. I am honored to introduce this panel discussion today featuring some of the foremost leaders of our time who have excelled at reaching and engaging these young people in realizing their dreams. Byron Sanders, President and CEO of Big Thought. Okay, Byron, you brought your own crowd, it's very clear. Goldie Muhammad, Associate Professor. Okay, for those of you who don't know Goldie, she's the pro Professor of Literacy, Language, and Culture at the University of Illinois, Chicago. Kara May, Founding Director. <laughs> founding Director of Chicago's Art in Motion School. And of course, a man who I'm sure needs no introduction, Common. Grammy and Academy Award winning artist. And with that, I'm gonna hand this over to Byron to kick things off. Have a fun time. Yes, I love it. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. How y'all feeling? Come on, right? Yeah, no, this is a beautiful thing. What a beautiful room. All of y'all are gorgeous, you're, you're just amazing, and we are gonna have a phenomenal conversation today. And before we dive deeper, I just wanna shout out to ASA, American Student Assistance, because you know this kind of thing oftentimes is treated with kid gloves. It's like the icing on the cake, when in fact, dreaming is the cake itself. Mm. You know, if we're talking about connecting with disconnected young people, it's not, they, I mean, nobody woke up one day and they're like, Harvard or Juvie, let me see. Right? So we have to do atypical things for young people who have had atypical experiences. Um, and we are so excited that this brother is using the cultural capital that he's built over the years based on like his own lived experiences and also the work that he's been doing 
in order to lean in. So we're going to have a great conversation here today. Just a little bit of context again, Byron Sanders, President and CEO of Big Thought. You know, our work actually is in part uh, dealing specifically with Opportunity Youth. Um, we've been doing this work for over 30 years. And so when we talk about everything that we're doing, we're saying all youth have greatness, all youth have creativity. And if we're not seeing the outcomes that we want, it's not because of the individual failings of these individual children. It's because we haven't created the conditions for that thriving to happen, right? That's right. So we see this all the time. We have a program, it's called Creative Solutions. We do it in juvenile justice system. And because we lean in on this and we tap into that creativity, it has the lowest recidivism rate of any program serving Dallas County or Tarrant County in North Texas area. Seven year average of less than 10% recidivism yeah. with the highest tier students. Come on, but you know what, that's one program. So what we talking about is systems change here. So with that said, let's get into it, brother. All right, so you know, this is a new initiative and we're gonna talk a little bit more about this, but you know, Common, you, you know, you ain't new to this, you true to this, right? Um, from Common Ground Foundation, shout out, to the Art in Motion Creative Arts School, yeah. Kara May, founding principal, to the Imagine Justice Initiative, and anytime I hear, uh, anytime I say, I said it earlier today, I say Arts in Motion, um, anybody here with like older grandparents who put an extra S in places where it don't belong, right? Targets, you know, run, run to Walmarts real quick. Yeah, I say that S is a gift from the ancestors. You know, don't correct them. Don't correct them. It's a blessed S. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, All these, right? Um, art in motion. Common, you've been doing these things, brother. Um, and now here we are with the I Am Free to Dream campaign. Talk to us about what does that mean? Free to dream. Why that? And then afterwards, talk to us a little bit more about what is, what is it going to do? What are you guys going to be uplifting? Yeah, well, first, I just want to say thank you to everybody being here. Um, thanks for the love you gave all of us. That's amazing. And, uh, and definitely want to thank the creator um, just for the breath of life. And, and, and just God is great. And we, we all here, like, for a great cause. So I just want to acknowledge that really quick. Um, you know, you just said it, Byron, like, creating conditions for our young people to thrive in. Um, for me... I grew up on the South Side, I had an incredible mother and my stepfather, um, incredible human beings who raised me with great, um, with great integrity and values. But I also saw a lot of other things that existed on the South Side of Chicago that lured many people that were exactly like me um, into drugs, into gang banging, into different things that I realized that, man, that could have been me. And as I reflected back on my life, I would think, well, what was the difference in me and my homie who chose that path and me? I'm no more, no more special than that individual. You know, I may have my gift, that individual, he or she has her gifts. But what it was, was a dream. I, and, and the dream, is, it was me feeling like I had some value because I was dreaming of doing something. So that, that affected my choices and the way I moved in life because I was like, man, I want to do something with my life. I actually have. And this dream only came about because I was given access to different things. My mother took me to computer class. She was letting me go hoop at Biddy Basketball. I, she took, put me in music and was trying to allow me to find what, what was I going to do? What was the thing that I was passionate about? Free to Dream is, is based in, in creating that access creating that, that avenue for young people to find their dreams. And those dreams, like, we want to clear the way. Like, and by clearing the way, I mean, we set these pillars up for free to dream because we believe it's a holistic approach to dreaming. Like, you can't just, like, be like, okay, academics is just going to, going to clear the way and it's just like everything is good because you're doing good in school. No, it's other aspects. Education is very important as I mentioned before and that's been one of the foundations but our pillars is, go from education, jobs, um, wellness, and justice. And these things like 
they have served me in my, when people ask me, well, how have you made it in this business? Though, I believe those pillars have been the, the things for me. I mean, God first, yeah. but it's like God has given me education. God has given me the justice. God has given me the wellness. And, and these are things that, you know, I was, I was doing a book signing. I ain't trying to plug my book. but No, my no book. go ahead and plug your book. <laughs> It's a book, I'll book I'll bro, like it's side. I'll do the book side. I'll do the book side. One of our students from Common, Common Ground came up and um, I signed his book and just had a quick conversation with him. And then later, my cousin, who's a part of our, our Common Ground Foundation, one of our, our mentors and leaders, she told me that that this young man, he had um, decided to go to therapy because of the conversation we had. Mm-hmm. And, and she later told me how he had seen his mother murdered in front of him. He, he watched his mother die in front of him. Um, and his family had been trying to get him to go to therapy. But he was like, no, I won't. But because of this conversation, because of whatever he felt at that moment, he, he said he decided he was going to do it. And it's been shaping him. The reason I'm bringing that up is, like, free to dream is, like, we're not doing the typical things to, to, to clear the way and, and and get our young people to their dreams. It's gonna take that, it's gonna take therapy, it's gonna take the wellness things, it's gonna take academics, it's gonna take us making sure that justice is, justice is a beautiful thing. It's, we, I ain't gonna take your shine, but we talked about it, it is some joy, it's some joy in justice. Right. And, 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 and um, we, we wanna present those things in new ways of thinking to get to our young people. And like, we wanna go into the communities, and not just wanna, we are going into the communities and saying, hey, it's people doing the work. We're going to activate with them, but we're also going to bring our ideas on a national level to, to all these communities. So Free to Dream is, is really an example of what the reason I'm, I'm here doing what I do, and it's me bringing my Harriet Tubman theory to, to our people. Like, I'm coming back, like, boom, it's time, you know? So that's what it is. That's right. That's right. No, shout out. Amazing. So, you know, what we talked about is that you've done other things before in this space, right? So this is not really, he's not new to this. This is an evolution and then an elevation, elevation, right? And so this campaign is about taking this out beyond beyond the shy, right? We're talking about things that could help move a culture. And quite frankly, I know we got a lot of folks in here. We deal with frameworks all the time. We're going to talk about a framework at some point, but we got to put the soul into the framework. There's a good friend of mine, uh, William Jackson, who's told me a little bit about put the soul in the framework. That's what we're talking about here. I love it. I love it. Carol May. What's up? What's good? What's good? So, you know, you've been a part of this work for a long time, founding principal of the Art in Motion Creative School in Chicago. Uh, would love to know, like, what does this dreaming look like applied in a model? Any stories you have of some young people that have had distinct experiences where they benefited from that? Absolutely. And so thank you all for coming. We are. Th- this is such an exciting conversation because these are the pieces that we don't talk about. Um, and when we think about students and their freedom to dream, we first have to talk about why they don't feel free to dream in the first place because all of the constructs that Common was talking about and the the movement that he had and the abilities that he had with the support from his mother and the support from the systems and all of these things, if those opportunities are not presented to them or if they aren't a piece of their, their personal framework, right, then you get them in a system like a school and you say, well, come on, all you have to do is dream and it'll just, no, 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 hold on. Just, what do you want to be when you grow up? Oh, no one taught you that you could be that? What a shame. And then you move on to the next kid, right? And so when you asked that question, it made me think of two very different children. Um, one that I'm super excited about because when he came to us at Art in Motion, and I've been in this game forever, it feels like. I'm going on almost 30 years in public ed, and so, I know, girl, listen. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> we out here. Um, <laughs> but thinking, thinking about the work, like this, this is the work, right? This is the life's mission. And so when I think about students that I've had from years past and even students at AIM, which we call Art in Motion, um, I think of one that when he came to us, he didn't even want to go to college. And he wasn't actually even interested in art, which is 
interesting because it's a creative arts school and so we kind of want you to want to be there, right? <laughs> and so when he initially was there, he was just kind of hesitant, very shy. I actually remember him meeting you, Common, on our very first day. And he, I was like, come on, come on, come speak. And he was like, mm, I don't really want to, because he was really, really resident, reticent and, and just afraid, yeah. right? And so fast forward four years and through a pandemic, and this young man who had really no interest in art is now interested in film and is has accepted an offer to a university. He's going to Southern and he's super excited and he actually runs our school. Um, <laughs> any event that we have, I mean, our team is over here. They actually know who I'm talking about because he is phenomenal and it's that growth and those constant conversations with him, right? Those planting those seeds, supporting his mother to help her to understand A, what his potential is, but B, how she can support and impact that potential, having that relationship. So seed, water, right? Plant, sow, water. Plant, water, sow, all the things. Being able to do that for him, he's on a completely different trajectory. Not because he was a quote unquote bad kid, but he just didn't have a vision. He didn't have a dream. And so supporting that becomes really, really critical. The opposite side of that coin then is a student that we have who literally lost his life just last week. And when I think about his story juxtaposed to the student that I just mentioned, I think of those missing pieces, right? Because I remember his story as an eighth grader as well. And space where I want to go back and say, man, I don't know, did we pour enough here? Like, was there enough watering here? Did you, were you able to visualize the dream? Did we pull you aside enough to say, hey bro, let's like map this out, outside of the things you're doing currently with that other set of friends, right? Outside of those things, what other things could we be forcing you to do, right? Because once you have a relationship, you guys know once you have a relationship with kids, you can actually make them do things. <laughs> it's real, don't let anybody tell you it's not. But you, you can make them. So, like, what could have been happening? And so helping educators, when we're particularly thinking about this room, wherever, whatever your milieu is and whatever genre of work you're doing, like, thinking about ways to impact that conversation, right, and those, those, those building blocks of relationship because just as the first student is going on and he's going to be amazing, yeah. I promise you I could say his name now and make you – make you chart it, but it's probably against some like HIPAA or FERPA or something. But he's going to be incredible, right? And the opposite of that is woefully, woefully systemic. This is the, the thank you so much, yeah. Kara. Um, shout out. You know, I want to take a moment to highlight a couple of things, right? You know, when we talk about art and creativity, oftentimes, again, kid gloves to the side. Yo, when the scores go low, what do we do? Tutor. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, you can't do all the extra stuff. Your electives are gone, bro. Like, we out. Um, but that's the, that's the opposite of what we should be doing, in fact. Yes. Um, yes. Um, because, you know, art shouldn't be put in a box. It actually needs to be integrated into every single content area because... Say that, Byron. When you do that, you allow spaces for what Common was just talking about and what Kara was just talking about to really manifest. And so just if, if, if there's a thing that you take away, art belongs wherever you thought it didn't, put it right in there. It yep. works. Um, the other thing I'll say is this. When we talk about the trauma that a lot of our young people bring, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but the fact is trauma affects your brain. It affects the shape of your brain, in yeah. fact, right? We have young people, nine-year-olds, walking around with the same brain powder presentations as somebody who did two tours of duty in Afghanistan. So when we talk about post-traumatic stress disorder, a lot of our young people don't have the post part. They wow. live it every single day. Wow. And that affects how they move through the world. We have to take into account that's another reason why this stuff matters. Yeah. Because we're not going to be able to go out and change a lot of the apartment complexes, like where they're coming from. And if they, you can't change some of those situations, but they need to be rooted in something yep. that allows them to make it through. And the dream is a critical piece of that. So let's talk about how we can actually get to framing the frameworks. Why does culture matter? 
why does joy matter? And, and just to contextualize, y'all, Dr. Muhammad. <laughs> Dr. Muhammad, consistently named among the top 1% edu scholar public influencers on the planet. Um, you know what I'm saying? On the planet. You know, planet Earth. You know, you can talk about a different solar system, but right here? Okay. Right. This solar system right here? Um, the author of Cultivating Genius and Unearthing Joy, right? What are some of the most impactful models we can observe to reach and engage these disconnected opportunity youth? So thank you, y'all. Y'all are such a beautiful audience, I just want to say. And at the center of every meaningful, productive, essential framework in education is love. I mean, I have so much love for the people on this panel. I'm, I'm in between the south side of Chicago. I'm from Gary, Indiana. It's, it's Chicago's. We are, y'all from Gary. Uh, listen, we are, we are Chicago south side's cousin, right? By way of Dallas, whatever. Uh, okay. <laughs> but at the center of every framework is love. Love is something that doesn't come up a lot. We don't say it to our children. We don't see it. We stay so focused. If, if you look across different frameworks over time, since the inception of the first school in the United States, we see skills only driven. And it's usually skills only in Eurocentricity and whiteness. And, you know, we have folks that say, well, let's move toward higher standards, more rigor. Let's move toward technology. Let's move toward AI and all these things. But what's missing at the center of all that is love. Now, yes, and in my work, I look at the ancestors. You talk about Harriet uh, Tubman, our North Star. They guide us. And so I got to a point where I felt unsatisfied with the way our schools were going. Some children were able to see the sun and to move toward a brighter way. And some students were left behind and uh, excluded. And they had to achieve despite of a system that was never designed for their success. Right. And so I went to the ancestors. I went to black history to say, well, what did our ancestors do educationally, excellently, and how can we use this black print, this blueprint, as a guide, a roadmap, a North Star? And I developed this framework from listening and to the ancestors guiding us. And I discovered that they had five major goals for learning. And this is the framework I want to share. And they did not call their goals standards or, or goals. They called their learning goals pursuits. Just think about the difference between those two words, a learning standard, a learning pursuit. Which one do you want of our children to have? They said, number one, as you are teaching and building and growing in curriculum, assessments, evaluation, make sure you help them to know who they are and whose they are, who they belong to, identity. Teach them identity. Teach them who they are, who they are not, and who they are destined to become. Also, teach them about the diverse cultures of others. Number two, teach skills, the proficiencies needed in each grade level, each content area. That's something we've already been doing. Mm -hmm. Number three, teach intellectualism. Teach knowledge set into action. Teaching them new people, places, and things. See, the difference between knowledge and intellect, knowledge stays in your mind. Intellect, you do something with it for your community. Number four, I teach criticality. Criticality is the social justice piece. So many people put out different frameworks, curriculum, programs. It has nothing to do with anti-racism, justice, or anti-oppression. That is a problem. Y'all hear me with that? How are we teaching children to navigate this world if you don't teach them about the hurt, the pain, the harm that's being experienced by them or people that look like them or people who don't look like them? Criticality helps to build a better world. Criticality is where you teach them disruption so that they know to use what they learn to make this world a better place. And number five is joy. Joy is more than just having fun or celebrating. Joy is teaching our children to recognize the beauty in themselves within each other. It's laughter, it's wonder, it's art, emotion, girl. It's the art and the arts emotion. <laughs> yes. Joy, when Pharrell, Pharrell wrote the foreword of my book, not to pub the book at all, but he says, joy is uninhibited, it's undistracted. It means like you feel like you belong. 
Joy is a sense of wonder, creativity. You feel seen. Have you ever walked in a room and you're like, this is a space I can live out my fullest potential? See, when you feel like your joy is restrained, children cannot be fully themselves, cannot live out their highest dreams. So when we talk about this idea of freedom to dream, that's the joy part. But if I don't feel safe enough as a child, if I don't feel well and healed, how can I dream? So as Common said, there's this beautiful relationship between justice and joy. You don't have joy without justice. And so think about these five pursuits together. What would that mean for a curriculum if every child had those five pursuits elevated And it becomes culturally responsive, but it becomes nurturing, and it begins to give our system a new way forward. So those, that's the one framework I've been working with. And as I've been doing this across states, across schools, teachers, I thought I would really hear from the children, which I have, but it's the teachers first that said, wow, I feel like I've been teaching 20, 30 years, and I feel invigorated. They're saying that this is making me feel like a genius, like I'm coming in, being approached as a genius, teaching geniuses. The children who have been disengaged with the learning, they have context now. You're not just teaching skills, but you're teaching in skills and context of my life, the world around me, justice and joy. Children are more engaged. And finally, even children who have been academically successful, according to the state exams. I have one child, Iris, that's a pseudonym. I call her Iris because her writing reflects that of the flower, Iris. And she says, you know, every day I cry at night when I sleep because I don't know who I am, and not knowing who you are is the worst feeling in the world. Now, this was a child that got into all the universities, the Ivy Leagues, the HBCUs. Skills are not enough, you all. Skills are not enough to be fully successful and to thrive in this world. Mm -hmm. We need all the things. Thank you. Yes. That'll preach. That will preach. All right, so coming back around to common, you know, as we talked about this, actually, this is for everybody. You know, when we say free to dream, the free part is really important, which means that it needs to be uh, opposed to those things that would keep us from being able to dream, what are some of the barriers right now that we're facing today? And sometimes I I, I think everybody in here could probably agree, we have some unique barriers that we're facing right now on the ability for young people to dream. How do you feel about that? What do you see? And even if you have some stories about articulating what that means for us, what does that look like? Well, I mean, yesterday I got to see a couple of guys from Chicago who um, were doing mentoring with Arnie Duncan and his program. And... um, one of the brothers said to me yesterday, he said, man, I was like, I was trying to explain why it's so much, I can't explain why it's so much violence in Chicago. Um, and he was like, he said, man, it's almost like you ever been in a relationship and you and that person just sitting in that house for, around each other for so long and y'all don't get exposure to anything else, so you just start friction with each other. And man, he put it, when he put that in perspective, it just made me think about like, the obstacles of not being exposed to things. Like, like the reason why I can tell you, like, oh, my dreams, my dreams is because of the exposure. Like, and, and that exposure started to increase as I became an artist. I started to go, look, I came from Chicago. It's very segregated. When I got to New York, I started seeing, like, Puerto Ricans and Dominicans looking like me. I hadn't seen that before. I was like, yo, what, you Colombian? It, that's, oh, that's how, a but, great accent you but, got. Yeah, yeah, that was amazing. amazing. But that's how, I mean, but, and I'm thinking I'm a smart kid, but the ignorance of not being exposed to other people's culture was holding me back. So the more I got exposed, the more exposure I got, <clears throat> I continued to do what we said and bring it back. And I think for us, it's just getting our kids exposed to new things. Even from, one of the things that sparked me about Art in Motion was like, when I got on the movie set, I was like, Damn, it's this many people working on a movie? Like, you see all the people working, like the 300 people doing something on a movie set. Usually when we watch a movie, you just see what's on the screen. But then you see all those people and you realize you never knew that that existed. And what if some kid, like, that, that I get to bring to the south, that bring this information to the south side or Brooklyn or, or Gary, Indiana or Atlanta, 
is is or, or the Bay Area is like it's like uh -huh, or Detroit or whatever. <laughs> uh, and you know, you know, y'all know what I'm saying. Omaha, stand up. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Now, let's you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, but what if some kid, you know, gets to find out that man, they could be a script writer or they're interested in writing scripts. And to and it's those things that you can hold on to. Even in the most confined space, when you have a dream, it could take you places. I've dreamed in some of the most difficult situations, and it helped me to get out of places. I've seen people who are incarcerated, who've lived lives and, and, and been through some of the most difficult times, but their dreams actually helped them to overcome some of the situations. And let me mention that a dream is... You know, someone said this to me, so I'm not taking they shine. But it was it was this artist I'm working with. We were talking about dreaming. I got a new song coming out called Daydreaming. I wish I could have shared it because it's all in context with this, but it ain't. Okay, okay, a quick bar, quick, quick, a quick. I'll say it was all a dream. I was talking to Dr. King. He told me to dream in ways that the prophets dream, like the one he had when nobody could wake him, or Nelson Mandela when prison couldn't break him. Malcolm was in the window saying, Asalaamu Alaikum, told Barack to rock the nation again. He got my nomination. The population in prison was labeled as forgiven. This was a God dream. Hip hop was our religion. Stevie's vision of ribbons in the sky. It's the good life we was living in the shy. Seemed true goy to dove as he began to fly. Told him Paz and Mace de la will never die. Me and Yasin was holding rappers at bay. One, two, checking. Suckers like back in the day. <laughs> hey, that's what that's what that's what that's what Dr. Angelo. That's what Dr. Angelo told me I should sing. That's when Dr. Angelo told me I should sing a cage bird with brave words for higher things. I got wings. Yo, that's why we came. That's why we came. You know what I'm saying? Come on. You know? You know, we, it's like, yo, he gonna say where? He said, that's sentences. Make them rhyme, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, that's beautiful. Thank you so much for blessing us with that gift, man. And see, this is the thing. How'd y'all feel when you heard that? Yeah. Why wouldn't you want that same experience for your young people, your students, and your schools everywhere? Man. We got to stop acting like we're di like children are different homo sapiens than all the rest of us, man. Yeah. That's what moves somebody. That's yeah. what connects. Goldie, what you got? Well, my name is Goldie, if you did not know. Sometimes I rhyme quick, she is sometimes not a rapper. I rhyme slow. Okay, okay. She's not think? a rapper. Okay. No, no, no. no. Good. You okay. got something, no. though. Plus, your name, your name well, is dope, too. When you said, what do you, I thought it was No, no, like, I done came Okay. Counts. These barriers, y'all, I want to name two. Yeah. One is when we do not see our children as geniuses. Mm. I used to ask teachers, like, tell me about your students, your black and brown students, your students with IEPs. Oh, they're struggling, they're at risk, yeah. they're confrontational. I said, uh-uh, tell me about them. I would ask them again and again and again. I never heard the word genius. When I was an eighth grade teacher, we used to have students, youth, who would go around the school and freestyle. Mm. Yes. Now, y'all know how to freestyle? <laughs> I do it real slow, as you could probably guess. <laughs> To be able to create a story of language in your mind and, and, and spit it out and make it rhyme in a matter of seconds, that's linguistic genius, y'all. Uh, right. That is, that the, the, the ways in which you have to know language, experiment with language, it is like a beautiful genius that most people don't have. We didn't call those children genius, linguistic geniuses. They said, stop doing that and get in class for the real work. What is the real work, the work that they don't see themselves in? So one of the barriers to this work is when we don't see the brilliance, the genius, all of the beautiful things of our children, because ideologies then inf inform practices, which inform these weak standards and curriculum. Mm -hmm. and they're struggling, y'all. We don't have struggling students. We have struggling systems. We have struggling standards. We have struggling curriculum. I do curriculum audits all over the country, basic, basic, and basic. 
the, and and guess basic? what they are again? Basic. <laughs> The second barrier that I want to mention is, um, so I'm a historical researcher. So I study history of education, particularly curriculum, pedagogy, starting from the 1600s. So let me take y'all to the 1600s. Y'all want to go to the 1600s? Go to the 1600s. I don't want, who want to go back there? Let's, let's that go. was a joke. So when you study the 1600s and the curriculum from the first public school, which it wasn't really public, right, because <laughs> it wasn't open to everyone, we find that education and curriculum was skills only. We have that today, 2024. It lacked representation of people of color and ex uh, historically excluded people. We still have that today. There was no social justice, anti-racism, anti-oppression. We have that today. The children could not see themselves grow and see the identity in their lives. We have that today. So a big barrier to all this is that, man, we still doing the same thing. We just put fresh coats of paint on the same structures that are falling apart, the rotting wood, and we say, oh, this is a new initiative. Yes. No, it ain't. You ain't fooling me. It's the same thing right underneath. So when we are not adding these things of joy these things of criticality, these things of love, identity. We are doing the same thing, and we just call it something new and get people excited. So until we address those two things, both ideologies and in our practices, and disrupt these systems that we had since the 17th century, we're not really going to make the progress that we are capable of. That's right. Amen to that. Amen to that. Amen to that. Um, and doubling down, there's a brother who came through one of our programs. His name was Jose Bone Garcia. When you talk about naming genius, he got arrested for tagging, y'all. And he comes in our program and he says, nobody ever called me an artist until I got here. Meanwhile, this dude was making murals, right? Nobody ever called him a genius. He's a you gotta say it out loud, right? That's important for them to know, Kara. Yeah, he was a vandal. Right. Exactly. He was a vandal before that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yes, the academic piece is critical. We think about neighborhoods and communities. All of that is critical. But one one of the things that I know is a deep barrier, is that we don't love our kids. Yeah. We don't. And when we love them and exercise what we believe to be love, it's not healthy. Right. Because love doesn't mean that I let you do whatever you want. And I learned that the hard way with my own kid. It's like, oh, come on, let's do kids. It's like, <laughs> push back. Whoa, hold on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we are meant, we are built to be guardrails and, 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 and boundaries for children as they are learning. Mixed with love yeah. and respect and honor. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you, I mean, I wish I had money for every time I heard some academic person, some educator in some space, Say to something, say something to a student mm -hmm. that they would never allow a student to say to them. That's right. mm -hmm. that's and that's over all the years, mm -hmm. right? And so when we think about golden rule, I know it's not in the Bible, guys, I'm really sorry, but treat others how we want to be treated mm -hmm. is a real thing. Mm -hmm. Demonstrate love and, and respect is a real thing and it's a necessity for our students as much as we crave it as adults. We want to feel validated. We want to feel heard. We don't want to feel ignored. We don't want to feel that people feel disdain for us. Yet we have students who come into spaces who don't look like us, who haven't been through the same things that we've been through, who haven't walked the same, the same pathway and we feel that we're better than them. And so I, I love you in a very mm, superior, and, and this isn't even race constrained. Yeah, that's right. Because say, I see black folks part. and white folks yeah. and Latino folks all treating children the same way. Yeah. And so if we aren't able to say, I love you and genuinely mean it, and because I love you, I'm willing to go the extra mile and do the things that you need, which then means I have to actually know what you need, which means I have to have built a relationship with you, right? If I'm not able to do those things, then how dare I stand in a space and talk about how the system is failing? 
because I've become a part of that work. Yeah. And, and sometimes I've been a knowing participant, but sometimes I literally just had no idea yeah. that I was contributing yeah. to this cycle that becomes a cyclone for these babies. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's my missing, Powerful. that's my big barrier. Powerful. The love piece. Thank you for sharing that. I'll, I'll elevate one other thing. <clears throat> um, everybody knows we're in a time and place where it's becoming against the law to talk about things that are intrinsically connected to these young people's identity. So when we talk about being able to know, and we talk about being able to know from whence I came, fight back and push back on every incursion on the ability for people to, to know, believe, and be informed about who they are, where they come from, and the true story of that, right? That's the other barrier that we need to be talking about. And they gave me a mic, so I, I, I was gonna say it. <laughs> Told them I was gonna say it. So yeah, push back on all of that. Last thing. Last thing, in five words or less, we talked about some beautiful things, joy, love, relationships, dreams. In five words or less, what do people need to do out there in order to embrace this need for opportunity youth to be free to dream? I'll start over here, mm -mm. and we're going to end with, no, that's how we're doing. That's how we're going to do it now. Yeah, let's do it. Come on, Kara May. Lead us in, and then Kama, take us out. We can we can estimate too. Estimate. We, you can round, you know. We can round. Oh my God, we can round. we're gonna start over there. Like, what? You ain't got a bar for us? No, Come on. no I can sing you a song now. Come on. When, what? <laughs> um, listen. We have to, and that we have to. Don't count, Carl. Don't do that. Right. We have to be attentive to our students. Recognize who they are know them for whom they are, love them, and teach them love authentically. You. Thank you. Thank you, sis. Mm -hmm. Dr. Goldie. Do the self-work. Mm. Be uncomfortable. That's where your body, your mind, your spirit will grow. And remember, transformative work does not happen by yourself. Get your people. You don't have to do the justice work That's right. alone. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Um, Y'all know I'm long-winded, so I'm not going to say. <laughs> or people that know me you know I'm long-winded. But you know what? A, a, a lot of things, incredible things have been said that I'm learning, too. So I really don't want to say words. What I want to do right now is just take, like, I'll take the, the minute we have to say a quick prayer together. I, I would love to do that. I never did that at a panel, but I'd love to do a prayer with us. So everybody breathe in all this good. Breathe in all this good, all that God got for us. Yeah. And breathe out anything that ain't supposed to be in our bodies, in our spirits. Heavenly Father, creator of the heavens and earth, we just thank you for the breath of life. We thank you for this moment where we get to receive you. We see you and feel you in each and every word and each and every person that's in this room. We are reflections of you, God, and we thank you. We thank you for this time of coming together just to build. We grow as we learn more about each other. We learn and get closer to you and become more God-like. May we continue on that path, Lord, and do it humbly. Let us take these words or whatever we've gotten, at, not just in this session, but wherever session we go to, and we can go back to our places and be, be influenced in the light, influencing with your light and be effective and be yeah. conduits of your love and just yeah. the way we speak, the way we act. Let us, like, distribute that joy, distribute that love in the way that, that Dr. Goldie was saying. And um, may we just, like, I pray for all those around the world that's dealing with different things. There's people going through things that's, that's just crazy, Lord, and, 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 and no human being should have to go through that. So yeah. our compassion is towards them, and may your grace and your mercy be on them. And may we take this session and just let it become fruitful. Like, we, we take these talents and make them five in the ten, Lord. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. We love you, and we thank you, and thank you for this time. Thank you for Brother Byron. Thank you for everyone here. And uh, we just thank you for life. In the blessed name of Jesus, thank you, Creator. Thank you, Jehovah God. Amen. Thank you so Man, much. I mean. Kara, Goldie, Common, Free the Dream. Let's go. Thank you. <laughs>
ladies and gentlemen, if you could please exit. We have a session starting in almost a minute.